Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. Jared is joining me. It's Monday afternoon. Thank you everyone for your love and support over the weekend. I think the videos have been well received. And of course, over the weekend, we've been checking our babies on the new hatchling bedding, uh, viper bedding. And Jared, you did the cleaning this morning. How did you find the cleaning experience your yeah, first the, time? The actual cleaning was good. I like spot cleaning. The, yeah. Um, yeah. We noticed that they get a lot of bedding in their water. So I just ended up getting two buckets, one filled with fresh water, one with water I could clean. Yeah. And then, and then I was already got some in there. Yeah. It should be fine for them, like it won't taint their drinking water. No, they seem to be happy on there, don't they? Water. But they all bed down nicely and I think we'll be fine. I actually quite like it because number one, um, it's more absorbent, so there's less changing of the towels required. And number two, the smell of coconut is actually you walk into the facility and it absorbs any smell. Yeah. So, but once we get our new um, airflow system working at the end of this month, oh, Jared, I think it will be even better. So, but overall, Jared, you're pleased with the result? I think we just got to fine tune how we use it. Yeah. Maybe a, maybe put a bit less bedding in there. Yeah. I think if we go for slightly less bedding, it'll be probably less likely, and also reduce the water levels down on the on the water, Jared. Yeah. So that's all good. Now we've had five new sheds over the weekend. So we've got another five sheds to test. Archie shed out, Jared. And you've got his shed in here all ready to go. We've mm -hmm. got five. Archie is our hypo boy. And let's just have a little look at him out of shed. We're hoping he's gonna prove to be het for pied. And there he is, isn't he beautiful? He's a fire hypo. And we hope that he's carrying the het pied genetic. And if he is, we shall be plugging him into his mother, which is uh, Money Penny, who's a double het hypo pied girl. And also we'll be plugging him into some other projects, um, which I think, Jared, the ones we've got in the game we're going to shed are Ebony that we sent off last week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully she'll come back and get more pied, if you have a look at her. She's not quite big enough yet, Jared. She needs about another 500 grams. But she is beautiful. And we've also got a, another girl here, Jared. What was the other girl was? We had Soot, but her shed was bad. Yeah, so Soot came out, and because it was actually um, really bad, we're not going to send that. Because the one thing you don't want to do is send anything that's um, soiled. I think she sawed it and I thought, oh, that's awful because it really did smell and I didn't have the heart to send a smelly shed. I think some people wash them before they send them, Jared. But you've got to be careful you don't damage the DNA by washing. So I think we'll wait for her to shed out again. Hopefully she won't shed out in her mess. And the other two was uh, the Ultramel Pied Project, Kelly. She shed out and we checked the size of her follicles today because we've been doing some more uh, follicle testing. Kelly has got, uh, I think she's about 7 mil, uh, if I remember rightly. So she's got 7 mil follicles, so that's good. She's a pied girl just over there, Jared, if you want to have a quick look at her. And she is pied, and we're hoping that she's carrying the head ultra. Right, and the other one that shed out was Sunny. So we've got Sunny, who's up there, Jared. He's the um, Het Sunset Pastel Het Clown. And he's a pastel, ain't he? And a pastel, ain't he? So we're hoping that he's a Het for Clown. And then we've also got uh, one of our hatchlings that have grown on from last year, Yorker, which is our Bamboo Exantic. Possible, or oh, she's 50% uh, Het for Ultramel. We've got her shed as well here, Jared. Is it uh, worth testing for Ultramar as well? Huh? Well, that's a good question, because you could do a double test for her. Let's just have a little look. Was she 100% head for Ultramar? But Yorker is over here. Let's have a look at her. She does look beautiful out of shed. Isn't she lovely? So if I look at her car, I'm going to put her up against a normal she bamboo. She is 50% head for Ultramar. So why don't we do a test for Ultramar as well? That's a good point. So there's the difference between the exantic bamboo and a normal bamboo. So if I put Het Ultra Mouse as a double test, mm -hmm. and then what we'll do, this is why it's so good to double check your work, 
She is beautiful. I do like her, Jad. And um, this was a surprise for us. We didn't know we had yeah. Exantic in the bamboo. We're not sure which Exantic, so we're asking to test it for TSK plus VPI. Uh, VPI plus we're going to test her for Ultramel. But if she's got the uh, the genes in there, we do prove out which Exantic she is. That will help us identify three other animals that will potentially have the right Exantic. It might be a brand new Exantic that no one's seen before because it came out of a surprise clutch. Or just look how the Exantic works beautifully on that head stamp though. She is lovely. Beautiful animal. The head stamp's the only thing that hasn't changed. Well, if you look carefully at the head stamps, Jared, I think that there's slightly deeper tones. It's got more of a champagne look to it. But if you compare it with the other one, it is yeah. different. And you can see on the dorsal, look at these beautiful patterns that are showing themselves. So there's little... It's almost like it's got like a highway going through its back. Can you see it? Yellow dots. Beautiful yellow dots. I haven't seen that before. And this is what's happening. When they shed out, they give you more tones. So she's I wonder, a cool animal. She's lovely. But if you compare that head stamp with the mother, you'll see it's very different. Not yeah, quite. Right. Do you see what I mean? This one's more greyed out. It's greyed out. So when the exotic goes in here, Jazz, something is coming. Something quite bright. She's yeah, almost become like a fluorescent champagne. Or it's almost like a metallic shine to her head. Can you see the me metallic paint on her? Yeah, her whole body looks metallic to me. It's beautiful. I think the Exantic into the bamboo is really a beautiful project, Jeff. We just need to understand and know which Exantic it is, but that's exciting. And we've got another girl, which I must show you, she's shed out as well, but she's carrying the same. So if we get the hold of that pen, Jeff, we should add test yeah, her ultra I'll do that after the, yeah. yeah, I'll do that as well. Okay. And then... She wants to come out and explore. This one here, I think, is absolutely beautiful as well. Same exantic. So by testing one animal, we'll be able to prove out three or four others. So this is the sister, and she's Mojave exantic. And they get brighter and brighter with every shed. And the father, which is Casper, he's going into shed at the moment, Jared. He's carrying the exantic. And the mother, which is that one over there, is also carrying the Exantic. So what it would do for us, it will identify four other snakes. So you get one shed test could actually cover you for four, uh, which is lovely. I'll just put that back. And I think there was one other shed that we were going to do, Jack. Let me just see. So we're testing for those three there. Test for Het Ultra Mel, which was Kelly. Kelly, we looked at her. We've done... Yorker, Sunny, Archie. Sunny we've done for the Jordan, Sunset Clown, Archer we've done, and then the other one was Tess, not Tess, Mel. Now and Mel, she's a pied. she is a pied, possibly het for ultra Mel, so she shed out as well, so that'll be helpful to have those. We'll send those off this week, and getting ready for the breeding season of course. So the other thing we've been doing is Jad and I have been ultrasounding, haven't we Jad? Mm -hmm. And as you can see on this chart over here, which you can bring out if you like, shall I bring it to the table? Yeah, if you want, you can do it. Yeah. So Jared's been making a list of all the girls and what size follicles they're at, and we've been ultrasounding. So last week we ultrasounded these ones, down to here, and you can pick out the big ones. Mango's got 10 mil, Isa, DG, Henchy, DG girl, 11. Bubbles, which is a beautiful Enchi Clown, 12. Uh, this one here is uh, Maria, 9.5, and Koji, 7.1. These two are the double het DG Pied projects. This one is Binky Gesture and Boo Boo Noodles. This is the double het DG Clown project. And then we've got some smaller ones here, which was uh, Costa, Costa, which Ember. really surprised me because Costa is a big girl, but she's only got seven mil. And Ember, eight mil, which is our Het DG Fire Enchi. Uh, Ember was only five mil, so obviously she's got a ways to go. Vesta, she's the Enchi. Uh, no, Ember was eight mil, Vesta was five, Mayu is ten. Mayu is ten, so Mayu is the yellow belly pastel. Um, cinnamon. cinnamon pied girl so she's building Linnea was the good one she came in at nearly 13 she's going to be the partner for the sunset boy so we're hoping to prove him out as soon as we get his shed test back Jared 
If it comes back in the positive, we'll be putting the sunset boy to her to try and hit some double hit clown sunsets is what we're after there. And then her sister, uh, Lucky, has only got five mil, so she's a bit behind her sister. Curiosity, who gave us the beautiful Exantic VPI clown clutch. She's at seven mil, which is pretty good considering she's just given us our last clutch. This one here is Caramac. Now, this is the one that I wanted to bring out, Jared, and see what we'd want to do with her. She's at 13 mil. She is a beautiful four-year-old, well, five-year-old, ultramel girl. And we were just discussing what we could do with her, Jared. So I'll bring her out, and then you tell me what your thoughts are as to who we should pair with, with her. And let's have a little look and see. So, She's a lovely example of a Ultramel. Five years of age, and just look how she's holding those colours, Jan. Beautiful, isn't she? So if I just move her hide out. So big, I can't even fit her in. Really? She is a big girl. But there she is. She's lovely. And uh, she's carrying 13 mil follicles, so she's probably going to be one to breed soon. And we're just trying to work out, there's two potential boys that we'd like to put to her and we've got to decide which is the one that we'd like to do, Chad. And um, what are your thoughts on that? I personally think, aim for the triple triple visuals. So triple catch, you mean? Yeah, well, in the future triple visuals, but yeah. if we build the building blocks for triple visuals and stick uh, bingo, well, let's bring bingo, banana, out. leopard, clown pied. Let's bring them out and just see if we put the two together whether they would actually work out well. So what we're looking at there is we're looking at Ultramel going to a clown pied with leopard and banana. Now the Ultramel and banana, they are obviously coming from the albino family. So that might enhance the quality of the Ultramel. I haven't actually seen what a banana and an Ultramel would do, but it could be interesting to see what the combination would be. And look, she can sense and smell him already. Look, look, look at this, Derek. She's like picking up, and look, she's licking him, trying to stimulate him. <laughs> It'd be funny if they end up locking straight away, but uh, I'm not expecting that. But um, anyway, this is our uh, dating site here. We've got our own little snake dating site. <laughs> what we do is we just put them together for a few minutes just to gauge a reaction on compatibility. And there's nothing wrong in doing that, and as long as you're supervising what's going on. But you can see that she's starting to pick up on his scent trail and just licking him. And he says she wants to explore him and stimulate him to get him going. She might be ready for a lock. She is 13 mil at the end of the day, so her body's going to be saying, "I need a male. Come on, let me let me wake you up and get you going, young man." But he's in the middle of a sleep right now, so we won't do this normally until quite late in the evenings. We've got some stormy weather coming this week, Jared. So if there's any pairing that we want to do, we could actually take this opportunity to do it toward the end of September. But there we go. So there's one possibility. Mm -hmm. So we'll just um, put him back now. But she was obviously checking him out. And he was probably thinking to himself, what's going on? I just want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All these romantic women stimulating these boys. But she's definitely up for some action, I think. So uh, what was the other potential boy we were thinking about, Jad? Um, was it Chuckles? Because we've got Chuckles, the yeah. So we've got a clown boy that is 100% het for... Ultramel, and we'll just bring him out and just see what's going on. So if we were to put these two together, now he's carrying the Ultramel genetic, and she's obviously a visual Ultramel, so we could, probably half the clutch will be Ultramel, and then the clown would go into her as well, which means that all the offspring will be 100% het for Ultramel. The clown. As oh, the yeah. clown. Yeah. So we'll end up with some, half the clutch will be ultra male, but all of them will be 100% for ultra male, and all of them will be 100%. So all we're doing here is building the ultra male clown project for the future. Now, look at these two, just checking each other out at the moment. See how they're doing a lot of tongue flicking? And he's never been paired or introduced to any girl before, but I find it fascinating to see how they, how they work together. It's really fascinating. He doesn't like that your breath stinks. <laughs> She's got to clean her teeth. <laughs> but the reason why I'm considering this, Jared, is because we've got the double-heck girls over here, which are prepared for him as well. 
but there's no guarantees that we're going to hit a, de uh, a, a, a an ultramel cloud like this there. And because we're putting het to het on the ultramel, there'll be 66% het ultramels, the ones that we can't see as visuals. So that means we'll have to shed test them to find out if they are carrying the het. Whereas this pairing here would give us guaranteed het clowns, and some of them, half of them, will be ultramels. And if we get a few girls, we could build them up for the future army that we want to build. So there's a fine balance between do we jump onto a three-way recessive project by putting the clown pied boy to her, but also bringing in leopard and banana, or do we put the visual clown boy, uh, which is carrying het ultramel, so that's probably going to be the decision that we need to make, Jad. But all I've done is I've recorded them both down as two possibilities. And I think they're the two candidates that we can consider. And one might be a backup for the other because Bingo is first time breeder. Chuckles is a first time breeder. So we don't know whether they're going to lock and we don't know whether they're going to be compatible. So it's good to have a couple of options there, Jad. But either way, I'm happy. The beautiful thing about the triple heads is that they will take two or three years to grow. And Jared, you were saying by getting the triple heads up to size, then by the time the market starts to grow, the value and cost of the ultra male visual clowns will be more affordable so that we could actually plug in a higher end male. And in the meantime, we're building up these triple head girls. That's what I think, that. yeah. I think stick chuckles to those two girls. You're more likely to hit a, a, a double visual from that. Yeah. Keep the double visuals, sell the rest. Yeah. And then use this girl to get the triple hits for the following year. Yeah, that makes sense. So that might be what we do. We'll have a look at the price of triple hits in case they are reasonably priced if they're available, of course, because that might be easier for us to buy them in rather than to actually take it as a long term project. Yeah. So there's always a fine balance between do we make them yourself or do you buy them in? What are the advantages of making them yourself, Jared? You know where they're from, they're clean stock, they're good yeah. stock. Yeah. You're not going to get any diseases or anything that you don't want. Yeah. You know the gar the genetics are guaranteed. Yeah. Um, also, then you get new bloodlines in if you buy from another place, so that yes. also cleans yeah. up and freshens up the collection. The nice thing is that this comes from um, uh, Kelly. Uh, Kelly actually produced this snake for us about 18 months ago, and uh, the Ultramar stock that they have is different to the Ultramar stock that we have here. Yeah. So that means that the Ultramar stock is going to be stronger going forwards, Jad. That there's less, there's two different bloodlines going in there. Not much interbreeding. Exactly. So I think it, you're right. That's a really good point, though. You don't want to have too much um, of the same family because it can weaken going forward. So I think there's a decision that we need to make there, Jad. Now, the other girl that we did a beautiful uh, test on was your girl, Shadow. And she came in with follicles. What size follicles, Jan, did she have? If you can just dig that out for us. 10 mil. 10 mil. So she's now doing really well. Now, we spoke earlier on a previous video about putting uh, Thor to her, which is our VPI Exantic Pied Boy. And the advantage of doing that would give us Visual Pieds, because she's 100% Het for Pied, guaranteed Cinnamon, but also that's going to be Het for VPI Exantic, and Cinnamon being a darkening gene will enhance the quality of the Exantic look, because the more dark genes you put into Exantic, the more beautiful they become. As you can see from the Mojave Exantic girl, it was beautiful, Jad. But we've been watching one of um, uh, the videos over the weekend that were put out by Nova. Canova. Canova. And... I want to show you a clip of another potential uh, pairing, Jad, that we could put. And this is actually called the Dark Matter. And I think it's best if I show you the video and then we can talk about the pairing. Have we got much time left on the video, Jad? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's just about perfect timing. So let's just do that. Let's see whether I can show you this beautiful animal. Now, the other thing which I'm really pleased to hear is that the first ever show, which is called the Southeast Reptile Expo, has been last weekend or a couple of weekends ago. And it was some um, Bod Vu of Bob Balls actually put together this show. Uh, and it was very much a uh, test for him because, you know, you need 40 or $50,000 to do a show like this, Jared. And the only way to recover your money is to get the breeders to come and the people through the door. Now, at the same time, there was another show that was uh, being planned parallel on the same weekend. So the problem with that is that you might have a diluted population going to two different shows. Therefore, both shows could end up being 
difficult to be productive. But it turned out that this particular show, which is the first Southeast Reptile Expo, all my friends that have been there and all the people that I've been watching have said it was fantastic. It was like Tinley, there was uh, Canova were there, all the big boys were there, all the big players were there. And there was a very, very good outreach yeah, public. Uh, the public came and quite a few breeders came and they had a fantastic time, Jared. And um, so I was going to show you a clip of this to show you this new genetic that we're thinking about doing ourselves. But I'm just very pleased that it went well for everyone. And the breeders uh, were able to sell a lot of snakes. And it was in uh, Justin Kabelka's backyard as well because they're all based around that area, Jared. So yes. it was done in Atlanta. So they've got a really good airport that you can fly in, hotels close by. And he's going to have another go at doing it next year as well. So they'll just make sure it won't clash with other events. So there's joint respect amongst all the people that put these shows on. It's very important to coordinate it so there aren't too many shows happening on the same weekend. But anyway, let me just show you a little clip of this, Jared. Tell me your thoughts and we'll have a look and see. and reptiles. I've seen murmurings about this morph combo online. What can you tell me about it? What is it? It's obviously gorgeous. This is a ball python combo. What are we looking at? So I would love to take credit for making the first one, but I can't. A guy named David Gutierrez did from Mad Ball Pythons. And then he actually sold this mail to me a few years ago. And what it is, is it is, they call it a black matter. So it is a gray matter, except it's got black heads. Super black pastel or black pastel cinnamon, super cinnamon, any way you can get that. And then you just add champagne and blackhead. So it's a pretty simple combo, but it's iridescent. In the sunshine, it's like rainbows. And it's jet black. I mean, when I put it against my shirt, it's blacker than my shirt. That's absolutely crazy. So what is giving it that kind of almost pied like effect with the white belly? Is that just something with the champagne? I believe it is the champagne that does that. It's, it's really it's, awesome. It's usually, you know, everybody that's worked with champagne knows it's variable, but all I get is kind of more, more or less white and this crazy kind of pixelation where they meet. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing. It's a beautiful snake and I, I think there's some other people here that want to take a look at it. So I'll let you get back to the show. We hope thanks you enjoy. So much. the show and we have our first really unique animal to show you guys. Okay, what's your so Justin was there and uh, when you get the big players everyone plays together. I think it's wonderful but I want to talk about the black matter now because we've got the ingredients for it Jared. So we may not want to put the Exantic VPI Pied Boy 2 Shadow but I thought when I saw that I saw Shadow. Let's have a look at Shadow and then we'll have a look at the boy that we could put to her just to see what your thoughts are Jared. Shadow's one of your favourite animals. Yeah. Now I was, um, I bought um, the boy that we're thinking about pairing about four years ago, Jared. And I was tempted to sell it this year. And I'm so glad I saw that video because I think we'll hold on to the boy. But there's your girl. Now you can just see just how similar she is to the Black Matter because she is a super cine. Just look at the beautiful belly on it. See? It's browner, it's not as black as what um, the black matter is, but not far away. She is het for pied, and just look how beautiful she is. She's got gold speckling on there. Look at the gold speckling, Jared. Mm, lovely. And look at the belly, isn't that just beautiful? And she's got all that beautiful ring on the tail, because she's het for pied. So if we were to put this boy to her, which is near you, Jared, in Gozo, let's bring him out. Now he is a black pastel. Champagne pinstripe. Pin pinstripe. So let's have a look. Put those two together. You're going to get guaranteed cinnamon. Half of them will have black pastel in them. Now we've got to be careful putting cinnamon and black pastel together because there can be ducking issues and billing, duck billing issues and kinking issues. But this super cinnamon girl that we produce is perfectly okay. So we've got to be careful with this. Now he's carrying champagne, which will then create the pied look so you end up with that and if the black pastel goes in there you're going to get quite a dark snake but it's missing one ingredient to get the dark matter Jared blackhead and we need the blackhead now luckily we've got three blackhead boys so this project that we do Jared might be in two stages so we might have to do this pairing to get to a certain stage now none of these are recessive genes they're all incomplete dominance other than the pied 
But then you don't need a visual pied, you just need a het pied. You don't even need a het pied. Well, he said if you put the het pied with the champagne, you get more of a pied look. The so one he was holding there had no pied in it. Was it no pied? No pied. It was okay. the champagne because they're variable. You can get high white, low white. Right, so what we Sometimes would do... Sometimes they throw ringers. Zit would be the boy. Now here's the black head and he's het for clown. So you can actually put the clown gene in or you can put this black head in which is actually a visual albino, lavender albino. They're both black heads and you could put either boy in and this one would obviously then be het for lavender. This is het for pied as well so you mm. could actually get some pieds. <laughs> so we could put that boy into your production.